asking for things like x-intercepts, in other words, where it runs into the x-axis, or zeros or roots. Zeros and roots are the same thing depending on which book you're looking at. Zeros are not necessarily where it runs into the x-axis. They are any value of x that makes the polynomial equal to zero. In some cases, if they are real, they coincide with your x-intercepts. If they are not real, then they will not be on the x-axis because we can only graph real numbers. So, on this one, we want to find the x-intercepts of this polynomial. How do we do that? Set all the x is equal to zero. Set all of what equal to zero? Y. I don't know. No, we don't start there. We have to start at the beginning. Where did we? What did we do to find x-intercepts in general? Because we can use that general information to do it. Set y equal to zero. To make y equal to zero. So that's where we should start, because the way it's set up is if you always use that, then that will work for every function. Whereas if you start partway through the process, those things will not work for every function you get. So, so we'll have zero. zero equals x minus two times x plus 3 times 5x minus 4. Now, based on the zero product principle, that means one of those things has to be zero. So that means either x minus 2 equals zero, or x plus 3 equals zero, or 5x minus 4 equals zero. If x minus 2 equals 0, this gives us x equals 2. If x plus 3 equals 0, this gives us x equals negative 3. And if this one's equal to 0, we have 5x equals 4, or x equals 4 fifths. The things that I have listed here are the zeros or roots of that polynomial. How do I go from my roots to my x-intercepts? Make a point. So, 2, 0, 3, 0, and 4, 5, 0 are my x. Is that a negative 3, 0? Yeah. Oh, yeah, thank you. x-intercepts. So do we need y-intercepts too, though? We'll get to those in a minute. Oh, I got an X so far. Okay. Mostly so, in when we put it, set the equation equal to zero and solve, we get the zeros in the process of finding our X intercepts. Now, okay. well, Bobby wants to know about the Y intercepts. Oh, okay. How do I find those? <laughs> put in zero for X. So, for this one, I'll have f of 0 equals 0 minus 2 times 0 plus 3 <coughs> times 5 times 0 minus 4, which will be negative 2 times a positive 3 times a negative 4, which looks like 24. Now you know it passes through that point. Now I know it goes through there. That's right. It also goes through these points. What does the end of this function look like? What are the end behaviors? Because that's the next question. So somebody's got an up and a down. Why do you know it's different? Why do you know it's not one of these? How do you know it's odd? Yeah, when we were looking at these before, we had the whole thing multiplied out already. And we could just look at the first term and the leading coefficient and the degree. Do you want to multiply it all out? No. No, and we don't need to. All we need to do is take the highest power of x in each of the pieces, multiply them all together with their leading coefficients, and we get x times x times 5x, and that tells us that our leading coefficient is 5, x and then we'll have x cubed, so our degree will be 3. Positive leading coefficient, odd degree, how does that look? 
Uh, no, that would be even. You said positive coefficient. Odd, positive coefficient, odd degree. Oh. Yeah, this one. Yeah. So as x heads off to infinity, my function is going where? Uh, uh, which we refer to as infinity. And as x heads off towards negative infinity, my function is going where? Negative infinity or down. Wait, how did you figure that out? This was what we did last time, where there was this set of, if it's an even degree and a positive leading coefficient, the graph looks like this. So both of them are going, at either direction x goes, both parts are going up to positive infinity. If it's an even degree and negative leading coefficient, both pieces are going down. If it's an odd degree and positive leading coefficient, it looks like this, where heading off to the right, we're going up, heading off to the left, we're going down. And an odd degree and a negative leading coefficient looks like this, so heading off to the right, we're going down, yeah. heading off to the left, we're going up. Yeah. Um, so this part will be given, so will this, the arrow, and either you type in INF or negative INF, or in some problems the infinity signs are already there and all you have to type in is the positive or the negative to indicate which direction you're going. It depends on when the problem was written as to whether or not you have to type all that stuff in. Now, for this function, one of the things I want to warn you about, we have some cubic functions and some fourth degree polynomials that we're going to be looking at. In these, this section, you should be able to factor every one of them with a few exceptions. There are, there's a fourth degree that it's like a quadratic, so you can treat it like a quadratic and solve it as a quadratic polynomial and work from there. But otherwise, you should be able to factor these. So if I ask you to find the x-intercepts of this thing, what do we do? 4x third, 3x squared. So what was that? 40x. Factor out an x squared. I can factor out an x squared. So I set the whole thing equal to 0. And that's going to be for x to the fourth plus x cubed minus 20x squared. And then to make this solution nice, I'll just solve by factoring out that x squared. So I'll have 0 equals x squared times, when I factor an x squared out of x to the fourth, what do I have? x squared. When I factor it out of x cubed, I end up with x. And what about when I factor it out of 20x squared? Well, I end up with minus 20 there. That's so that means either x squared equals 0, or x squared plus x minus 20 equals 0. And somebody already told me this thing factors. So that's x minus 4 times x plus 5 equals 0. So this gives me x equals 0. This gives me x minus 4 equals 0, or x plus 5 equals 0. This will be x equals 4, and x equals negative 5. So my points are 0, 0, 4, 0, and negative 5, 0. Now, 